So you have a story, Woody, and you are just Woody ready. Woody has a story, Woody's but Woody, you have at to the drink bit. first. Drink, you because drink. it's story time. Well, yeah, we have story to, time, again, everybody drinks. Because huh? you smoked a cigarette. Yep. Two on, for Taylor. you. Let's go, Taylor. Down the hatch! It's, it's two drinks, Woody. I'm sorry, because he lit a cigarette. <laughs> Fuck got a you. drink. Come on, let's not be bitches. Yeah, I mean, I'm running out. I'm three. I know. Go You've got a phone, oh. right? With text messaging. <laughs> All right. God, She's just going to show the story with well. Iowa. Some contractors come into my house. I'm going to change his name to protect him. And um, uh, he's telling me about his story. So he's from New York. And um, his uncle does like plumbing and sewage contracting but not the kind you might get under your house like these big pipes like gigantic concrete pipes that you could stand upright inside of and his uncle is the number one like sewage contractor in the entire state and they're italian if you follow where i'm coming from right this is a mafia thing oh <laughs> and he gets any job he wants all he has to do is pick up the phone tell them to accept his bid and then he wins that bid. That's how this works. That's why he's the number one guy. And uh, his uncle's old, balding, like hunchback sort of Italian guy. And um, the inspector comes on site. The inspector's like this college graduate. He's maybe 23, 24 years old. He's kind of new. He's competent, but he doesn't like know the scene. So apparently when you connect these gigantic concrete pipes, there's like a male and a female part where they go in together. And you put a soap around the edge and I, I, the soap serves as like a lube so that they connect and maybe as a seal or something afterwards. They're using the wrong soap. <clears throat> so the inspector says, man, you know, you got to take these things apart, put the proper soap on them. You'll be good to go. And the uncle is like, fuck you. And uh, the inspector is like, oh, no, I. I hear you. <laughs> you know, appreciate the offer and everything. That's but... very kind of you to throw that <laughs> <Yeah>. my way. <laughs> As a matter of fact, did that already. <laughs> it's good, but we're, we're talking soap now. And um, you, know, you got to take them apart and do whatever. The uncle is like, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> and uh, and he's like, again, you know, Jesus. he's getting a little nervous, but he doesn't know what to do. You know, and he's like, you got to do this. You know, I, it's not my rule or anything, man. And the uncle is like, I'll fucking kill you. Get the fuck off the job site. Get the fuck out. And the inspector is like, yeah, I don't know. So the uncle, this little Italian guy, he pushes him in the hole. It's like an 18 foot drop. They don't know if he's alive anymore. The fucker's in the bottom of the hole and he starts moaning. Now they're happy he's alive. But he's at the bottom of the hole and he's like, uh, they're not sure he's going to make it. And the uncle goes, all right. Cover him up, right? <laughs> oh, 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 fucking, it's like cement pipe on top of him. The guy's in that, um, it's an excavator. Holy shit, this is Lethal Weapon. This is at your house? No, no, this is in Buffalo. It's oh, from a while okay. back. This happened in Lethal Weapon. <laughs> <laughs> so so they, they, they have the big excavator thing, and um, they're, they're, the uncle's like screaming at him or whatever, and um, the, the guy in the excavator's like, I'm not fucking doing it. I'm not doing it. And uh, the uncle's like, fucking do it. I'll kill you too. And the, and the guy in the excavator, he locks the door. So now the uncle is like clawing at the door trying to get in. And uh, the guy's like, just, you know, I don't want any part of this. Forget it. And, um, and, and, and then they calm him down. They settle him down. And uh, yeah, so they do that to a guy. What's that? Lethal Weapon 3, they uh, they put the guy in the cement on the job site and just filled him up with the pipe on top. Yeah. <sighs> so That's so anyway, uh, the guy gets paid. And this this company, this like giant sewage company in New York, they uh, um, they shut him down. They're out of business. They can't do business in like New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, um, New Jersey. Right? Mm -hmm. All those states. Now he's shut down. He can't work for <laughs> what them <a> anymore. What a story. <laughs> There's more. So the, the guy who got hurt get paid. Two months later, he's back to being the biggest concrete sewage person in the state again. Someone else got paid, and they're good to go. That's how that went down. There's another story. I thought that was in your backyard during all of your right. renovation for the first like <laughs> four minutes of the story. No. Like, no, it's not, not, he's, like, he's like, and then I walked outside and said, no. 
Turn I it kicked off. Francisco <laughs> into the hall and he screamed he, as he, he fell. And I stood between the pipe and the please, and said, Woodward, please, no, not this immense. And I let it happen. <laughs> just fuck, fuck up, up my door, fuck up my door <laughs> jams. If Jamal was in that hole, I'd have been so cool with it. You know, let oh. it <laughs> Oh. Oh, there Jamal. is no sympathy for yeah, Jamal. No, Jamal. Jamal can be a statue. Uh, <laughs> Jones, yeah, Jamal's fine with it. So there's another story. Um, this guy, this time it's not his uncle, but it's him. Um, he lives in New York, like I said, and he owns a, I don't even want to say what kind of company he is, but, uh, cause I'm afraid people are going to like dox him and figure this out. And this started, the story starts like 15, 20 years ago. I don't know how, I don't know the time frame exactly, but, uh, he's up there and he's in New York and he's got a successful subcontracting business. But um, it's not like lighting on fire or anything. And at the time, this area, Research Triangle Park, is like fastest growing. It's winning like best place to live in every like money magazine or whatever. And people are flocking here. So much like I did at that time. Anyway, he, uh, he, he flies down here without like any setup or anything. He just he flies down here. He doesn't have a car. And he calls the local like building supply space and says, hey, I'm this kind of contractor. What do you, uh, you know, where should I, I need a job. Who's, who's hiring? You know, not, I need a job, but like, I, I want to bid some projects and they say, go here. So they send him to this big subdivision and the guy's like, I'm a, I'm a contractor. I want to do this for you. He bids it out quarter million dollars and, uh, right on the spot. They're like, yep, I'll take it. And, uh, and now he has a quarter million dollar job, no employees, nothing. So, um, he calls up his, his staff from, from New York and says, guys, fly on down here. We're going to do a thing. Now he and his wife, he had two, two kids. I think they might've both been daughters. We're not sure. Um, he had two kids and he and his wife had talked about it, but she didn't know that it was like really going to happen. And she certainly didn't know it was going to happen this fast that he was going to land a quarter million job. Like he, he literally took a taxi to the job site and a calculator and just started, you know, getting to work. So, um, he calls his wife and he's like, it's great down here. You know, I got more business in five minutes than I've had, you know, all year up in New York. You know, we're moving. And um, she's like, oh, fantastic. Let's do this. And, and he's thinking that the marriage is great. He's thinking that everything is cool. But his wife is like, nope, I'm not moving. Um, I'm going to divorce instead. So what happens is a few weeks later, he, uh, you know, she calls him and she's like, it's over. I, you know, I've worked with an attorney uh, and, you know, I want half of everything. I want your truck. He had like a brand new truck. And, uh, and that's that. And he's worried that he's not going to see his daughters and stuff anymore. So, um, that's where it stands. Now they're arguing now, you know, he's running the business and it's going okay in North Carolina, but his personal life is a wreck. They're arguing all the time. So, uh, um, anyway, he gets a call from his cousin and his cousin is an assassin for the mafia. And he says, dude, you got to watch your back. And he's like, what? Watch my back. It's like, yeah, someone just tried to hire me to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm not gonna, but they just hired me. There's a hit on you right now. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Then what does Mark Wahlberg do? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you, he hops in the truck that she's demanded that he returns and he drives back to New York. Just fucking no radio on, stone faced, like nine hour drive or 11 hour drive back up to New York, just focused the whole time. And, um, and he drives all the way up when he when he's like 10, 15 minutes from home, he calls and he says, you know, honey or whatever he calls her, get out of the living room, you know, put the kids, you in the kitchen, I'm coming home. And she's like, what? He says, get the fuck out of the living room. I'm on my way home. So he goes home. He sees the house. He makes it right. Blah, drives into the fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> but he hit like the front steps and lost most of his speed. So he hit the house, but he's not like in it or something. He just damaged it. Merker's girlfriend spotting drink. Yeah. Yep. I was going to let you finish your story. So... He throws the thing in reverse, hits the gas again. Now he's smashed into the house. As he opens the, the, the driver's side door, now he's in the house. And uh, he's not beating anyone up or anything crazy like that, but he's returned the truck. He pulled the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he's walking down the street, and this is a big, strong guy. And, uh, and he's just sort of 
like I guess getting his head together and um the police get up to him and and name change they're like you know are you uh Joey Soprano and uh he's like yeah that's me and they're like uh put your hands behind your back okay <laughs> and then he puts his hands behind his back and um <clears throat> uh, and then they book him in and whatever and uh, that is his return, the truck story. And uh, then what happened is the, the story wraps up his um, like, I don't know, we got off or something like that. About two or three months later, his wife calls and says, I uh, these do the, the, these kids need a dad. I'm going to move to North Carolina. You're going to visit them whenever you want. You're going to be a part of their lives. And the moment that the youngest graduates from high school, I'm moving back to New York and um that's how it actually went down. They went there. They were like kind of, they got along with each other ish, you know, as divorced, you know, in regards to how divorced parents do. He had good visitation rights throughout the whole kid's childhood. And um, this like 15 years later, when the last one graduated from high school, she moved back to New York. And I'm like, oh, so it really worked out. And he goes, well, she did try to kill me. And I haven't forgotten that. <laughs> that's my story that's uh that's pretty intense wow. yeah same guy i told you guys new jersey's a shithole you won't listen it's to me fucking... how many times do i have to say it? it smells and there's organized crime drink again that's murphy's girlfriend, girlfriend.